Good morning, everybody. We're un unboxing the Lexmark X364DN this morning. It's a uh, $550 black and white MFP. Uh, I have to stop and give a shout out to uh, Office Depot who got us this on a special order. Uh, we ordered it on the 2nd, got it on the 6th. Uh, free shipping and $100 less than anybody else. So they did a heck of a job getting us this when we needed it quickly. Um, like I said, Lexmark does this stuff really well. I don't know if I said that or not, especially these laser printers. So let's see what it looks like when we get going on the unboxing. Shipping, shipping information in half. Okay, so right on top of the box, got a huge installation poster, which is, uh, that's beautiful. You can't see this. A lot of them, they slip down inside. Some of them don't include this at all. They expect you to get it off the CD. Uh, so this is great. So it looks like it's going to be pretty easy. And uh, uh, it was pretty, the box is pretty light and it's pretty compact, so I shouldn't have any trouble getting it out. So let's see what we got here. This is the original tray for the um, document feeder. This is the uh, a hefty power cord. Well, that's a hefty cord. Facts. Phone line, a little insert here to register online. Okay, I'll just cart this styrofoam. And basically, we have the unit sitting right here, that's one piece of styrofoam. So let's reach down and see what we got. anywhere but there seems to be two handles right on the top here just as you can get your hands down there seems to be two handles there I'm looking out sure enough that was that was pretty easy and down here we have a CD and some important uh, uh, returning your cartridge information and how to do that. So uh, we got to shift the camera view. Okay. We only spent a couple of minutes so far. In this heavy duty plastic bag. And one piece of tape on the top. Looking gray and white, gray and white. Uh, if you want to call it nice looking, it's comparatively nice looking gray and white thing, uh, color scheme. Let's get rid of the bag. All right. Uh, the, the first thing we're supposed to do, according to the instructions is put on the tray and that goes grooves it's real easy to figure out where it goes and just pops right in there real easy all right the next step is to open the front there's a couple pieces of tape here front's already open a little bit Open the front. Uh, another piece of tape over here. And another piece of tape over here. Actually, all of them are kind of loose. 
but that's okay with me. All right, you can see there's stuff inside here. This is all related to the to the drum and developing. And so step four wants us to pull this out, remove all of this packaging stuff from the from the um, drum and developing unit. And then it wants us to put it back in and then release the toner and shake it. So let's take this out. There's a gray handle here. Great green handle. Okay, we got the drum unit out here. And there's all of these red clips that have to come off. And do this foam. And then pull this out. This is separating the two units so they don't bang together during shipping. Okay. This is the entire developing unit. It's two pieces. And here's the drum on this end. Don't want to touch that ever. So it wants us to put it back in. Now we got everything off. Goes in easy enough, I think. Yep. Kind of pops in with a little bit of a spring assist. And the next step it wants us to do is to press this a green button and pull the toner cartridge off the front of the unit. So the green button is down here. Press it. Okay, and here's the this is the toner cartridge. This is the developer roll here. You don't want to touch that. As you can see a fine coating of toner on there. It wants us to rotate and in, in all directions several times to get the toner distributed evenly so you don't get any light areas on the page when you start it up and then put it back in it has these big white roller things that fit where these green arrows go point which is nice, no guesswork. Goes in there really easy, just kind of like almost lays in there really easy. And then the uh, next step it wants us to to just close up the front door. Alright, um, take the tray out. Of course I don't have any paper handy. I never do when I do these things. But uh, every once in a while I remember. But there's more tape that needs to come off. Let's take this off. And there's some here. And there's some here on the hold the tray shut. And it's leaving some residue down here. But here a, a way to get the residue off, a handy way, is to just use the tape to pick it off and it works like a charm so you don't get any ugly greasy stains on there after you use it for a while this is some heavy duty fiberglass reinforced tape a lot of people, vendors just use plastic tape these days so I don't know whether it's necessary or not but it's a little low little insurance with Lexmore to keep make sure the stuff stays closed. There's a pad up here that's in the feed rollers to the document feeder. You can pull that out. This opens up a piece of tape here. And make sure all the residue comes off because eventually it'll show up as some sticky sticky stuff. And we'll turn it around. There's a piece here. 
piece of tape, two pieces of tape holding the cover closed in the back. And back here is if you get a misfeed in the paper transport area as it comes around, you might have to come back here and get it out. Hardly ever have any. I mean, all the ones we've tested, we hardly ever have to go in the back here. It's almost always, they don't misfeed much at all, but it's almost always someplace else. Okay, we have a power switch in the back, power cord, a Kensington lock port here. Uh, and now the, the fax and phone lines, and this is the uh, network port, and then they have a little label here that should be on top of this. Should be up here that says don't plug it in before you put the CD in. Don't plug the USB cable until you put the CD in. So here's the USB port down here. We're going to be doing this network but um, so we don't have to worry about this but this was in the right place it was blocking the USB port down here for those of you who are going to hook this up directly to your computer you, you have to be certifiable to do that but if you have no other choice I mean if you're going to spend this much money on a, a call on an MFP you most certainly have some kind of a network available You'd be nuts to spend this much money and not put it on a network so other people can use it. Uh, you hook it up to the net, your PC and then share it. I don't care what model it is, your PC is going to be jittering and juddering anytime anybody tries to send a print job because they're sharing your PC and the printer as well. All right, so that's basically it. It wants us to put paper in. So let's take a look at, at the cassette. We got a little message in here to return your empty cartridges to Lexmark. Lexmark is pretty firm on that stuff, so that the, you know they want to control the quality of their of their cartridges. I don't blame them. All right, it's uh, there's all pictures in here, clear as day, on um, how to adjust the tray, jog the paper. Uh, how to how to put the paper in? Uh, and there's one here and here to show you if the paper should go up, face up or face down. It looks like that's how you adjust the legal piece of tape. There's heavy uh, embossed guides for letter executive A4 legal uh, on the tray here. And there's some little. Some little flap that flips up here that says A6 on it, so that's for a European paper size. We're not going to have to worry about that because we're, we're not doing European paper sizes. And that's your side guys. It's all it's all plastic. Doesn't look like there's anything that's going to be too easy to break here. And it goes in and out pretty easy. I like to be able to just do this. Now there are, slip it in without taking it out, there are little, little uh, ears sticking out here to keep people overfilling the tray. Sometimes they can interfere, interfere when you're putting, um, loading the paper from the top. We'll see what happens when we try to put a full loop. So basically that's it at this point. Uh, I can't imagine it took any more than 10 minutes with all my talking at the same time. Uh, it's about as easy as it gets for installing a, uh, a device. Um, there's another piece of tape in here that I missed. And that is for this. It keeps the paper from popping out. 
and falling on the floor when you print and uh, keep them j jogged nice and straight so misfeeds are from in here uh, here's your multifunction tray uh, these guides there's a clip over here to open this so that you can put a piece of paper in here and this pops out uh, so you have an extra paper source when you need it. It's handy for thick paper, labels, that kind of stuff that you don't do too often. Uh, and then when you're done using it, you close it back up and use this for your main paper. So it holds at least 250 sheets. Plain. So that's it. Nice little machine. Uh, Hard keys, two line LCD display, USB port, push, you can print to, it's print from and scan to, uh, navigation keys to work your way through the, uh, through, through the menus, and then hard keys over here for copy, uh, copy, scan, fax. Uh, this is your image quality adjustments. Here's some copy control settings here and some fax settings here. A numeric keypad and you'll have to use T9 input uh, when you need to enter addresses or destinations in the, well, in the, in the software there'll be uh, a way to uh, set up shortcuts I'm um, positive Lexmark does stuff like that. There's another piece of tape over here for uh, getting to hold this original extension down. Uh, this folds out for when you put long originals in there. Maybe this opens up for misfeeds, an original misfeeds. There's your platen glass. That's letter size. Anything bigger uh, than letter, like a legal sheet, would have to be fed through the document feeder. And as it goes through, it gets runs over this slit here, and it's called a slit scan feeding. Other originals fit on the glass, and this scanner goes back and forth. Anything smaller than than letter. Well, that's basically it. Looks good.